This lesson covers basic user, group, and computer management. So the focus is going to be in the Active Directory Users and Computers tool. Now I've turned on the Advanced Features view. This enables things like that Active Directory Attribute Editor that I showed in a previous lesson. User accounts can be created in any organizational unit or container you wish, but by default, they will be created in the Users Container. But notice this is a container and not an organizational unit, which means I can't directly apply group policy or delegate administration. For that, I require an organizational unit, which I have here. I can create new users. I can right click in the open area and select new user. Or from the actions, I can also say new user. I enter in key attributes such as the name, a password, and I can configure should the password be changed at the first logon. I can say the user can't change it if it never expires. And maybe I initially create the account as disabled. And that's now created a basic user. But there are many, many other options I can complete. For example, description, office, telephone numbers, address information, profile. I can specify a profile path. So for example, when they log on to a machine, they get the same profile each time. This is known as roaming profiles. Typically, you will set this as a subfolder of their home folder. I could specify a particular logon script, but normally we'll use group policy for this. And lots and lots of other options available to me. Notice this is one of the options around read only domain controllers. So I can see if this particular password has been cached on a particular read only DC. If that read only DC was then compromised, it could be reset very easily. Now, while I can set all these attributes manually, a normal option that you'll want to use is to create a template user account, populate many of the fields, and then just copy that account. When you copy an account, it will still prompt you for some of those key attributes which have to be different. It will generate a new SID, a new GUID for the account, but all those other fields will be pre-populated for you. I can also modify multiple users at the same time. Now, not every attribute will be available, but the ones that can be populated on mass will then be available in this special dialog box. So it makes it easy to update multiple users through the graphical interface. A key task you'll typically have to do is for example, resetting the password on an account and enabling it. So if I disabled this account, you'll see the icon has changed to disabled and you'll enable. This typically happens because the user forgets their password they try a certain number of times based on your account lockout value in your group policy, and then the account is automatically disabled to prevent someone hacking that account. You should right click and enable that account. There are a number of built in accounts in Active Directory. For example, we have an administrator account. We have a guest account that is disabled by default. And then we create our user service accounts. We also have groups. And once again, there are a number of built-in groups in Active Directory. For example, we have domain administrators. We have groups such as backup administrators. Now these are found in built-in. So a backup operator is someone who can, for example, perform backups on a server. They can log in, they can back up the data. They can't do other administrative functions. There are people who can manage printers. And these are not just domain controllers, this is any server. So if I need someone to be able to back up all of the servers in my environment, I would add them to the backup operators group on each server. To create groups, I use that same type of action, that new group. We previously covered this under the file system area. So I can create global groups, which can only have members from the local domain, but can be used anywhere in any domain that trusts this one. So anywhere in the forest. I can create domain local groups. So this is only visible in the local domain, but can contain objects from anywhere. And then those universal groups that can be visible anywhere and contain objects from anywhere. If I want to apply security, I create the group of type security. So this can be used as part of access control entries in access control lists. The other option is distribution. Suppose for example, I have an email system and I wish to be able to email a particular group. Well, I can make it a distribution group which then can be the target of emails, but cannot be used for security purposes. There is a model on how we should use groups. To simplify management and to avoid challenges with objects being deleted in other domains, typically the goal is we will have users. Those users will be placed into global groups. So remember, 
only users from that domain can be placed into that global group. So it's local users from that domain placed into a local global group for that domain. In a domain that contains the resource that I wish to give it access to, I would create a domain local group and into that domain local group, I would place the global groups from each of the separate domains. That domain local group in the domain that's local to the resource is then given access to the resource. This enables each maybe domain administrator to manage who is a member of that global group. And then the group that has management of the domain that has the resource can control the global group's access and membership. When we think about the various groups available to us, it's often common that we see many, many people a member of the domain admins group. The reality is your domain admins group should only be the key people who are trusted in your environment and require those domain administrator credentials. Often people don't need to be domain admins, they actually just need to be delegated authority over a certain organizational unit. So you should protect this very, very strongly. Anyone who's a domain admin can really do anything they want. Then we have enterprise admins. This should be an even smaller group. And again, should only be the most trusted people in the organization who have to manage all of the domain sort of membership and trees and forests within your organization. There's also a schema management group, the schema admins. These are the people who can actually modify the schema. And it's actually very common to leave this group empty and only add someone in as they actually require permission to change the schema and then remove them again. It avoids any accidental changes to the schema that could have a very detrimental effect. Take some time to look around your environment. Take a time to look at built-in, for example, and look up what these various groups do. The description is actually very useful and will give you some ideas on what groups you may need to add users in to actually perform the various functions. The last type of object is actually the computer's object. So every machine that is a member of a domain actually has its own account in Active Directory. It's created automatically when you join the domain. So when you perform that join domain through the system control panel applet, for example, it actually goes and creates an object in the Active Directory. Now by default, your computers will be added to the computers container and users added to users. It is actually possible through the redirect CMP, you can specify an alternate container that any computer that just joins the domain would automatically be created in that container, which could be an organizational unit, instead of that default computers. Likewise, I can use redirect USR to specify an alternate container for the default for user creation. So it just gives you some more control. One challenge you may find with computers sometimes is there's a special secure channel that's really between the computer and the Active Directory. This enables that communication of potentially sensitive information. Now, sometimes this secure channel can be lost because, for example, each of those computer accounts actually has a password with Active Directory. Suppose I have a computer account and I take a backup and then I carry on using that machine. And then 60 days later, I restore that backup. Well, that computer account password was probably changed in that time. So now that computer cannot talk to the domain controllers. You may need to reset that secure channel. Now there are some fairly unpleasant ways to do this. For example, I could remove the computer from the domain. I could then, for example, say reset account and then rejoin that machine to the domain. I could do the same thing from the command prompt. I could actually go in here and say DS mod computer, the DN, the distinguished name of that computer, and then do dash reset. A nicer option is to actually use NetDOM. If I use NetDOM, reset, and I can just pick a machine, Savdal Testo 1, and then tell it the domain, it's actually going to try and reset the password on that machine and Active Directory. Now that machine I don't think is available, so it'll probably error out. But that's the command you can use. So I can use dsmod, I can use netdom, I can use nltest, I can even use PowerShell. I can use the test dash computer secure channel and then the dash repair switch. So different ways to reset that channel. Now there is actually something very important to note about this for users, computers, groups, anything. All of these objects have their own security identifier, their own globally unique identifier, a GUID. If I deleted an object, and then create a new object, even if it's the same name, that is not the same object. Even if I've given it the same name, it's completely new in the eyes of Active Directory. 
any permissions it had, any settings would be lost. If you delete an object accidentally, then you need to restore that object, even from a backup, or if you're running Windows Server 2008 R2 and above, and you can set the forest mode to 2008 R2, you can enable the recycle bin, which is described in this article. Essentially, you have to make sure the forest mode is 2008 R2, and then you just enable this feature, recycle bin. Once you've done that, you can use PowerShell to restore the object, or as I talked about previously, I can actually use the Active Directory Administrative Center. So for example, if I go into the Justice League and I delete Oliver Queen, I can then navigate to that deleted objects. I can search for the user and I can just say restore. So that's performed an undelete because when you delete an object, it doesn't actually get deleted. If you just deleted the object straight away, the multi-master replication of Active Directory would just recreate it. Other domain controllers may see it's missing and create the object. So it's something called tombstoned. It's marked as deleted. So we can bring that object back. The great thing with the Active Directory Administrative Center, it's also showing me the PowerShell it used to both remove and restore that object. So it's a great way to learn what the PowerShell would be to automate functions. There is another way to join machines to the Active Directory domain. So one of the great utilities we have is something called dejoin. So typically when I join a machine to the domain, I have to reboot that machine. Dejoin allows me to pre-provision a machine. So I can say provision into a domain. I can say the name of that machine. So I'm going to say sav pre-prov. And I can specify a file. So it's now creating a file that contains the metadata to join this machine to the domain. So say this is a virtual machine. I could actually mount the VHD. Maybe it's a brand new template I'm deploying. I would mount that VHD and then I can inject this text file into that virtual machine. So when that machine starts up, it's now pre-joint to the domain. There's no reboot required. So this is a great way to automate the joining of a domain without requiring those reboots. Basically doing an offline domain join. This concludes the lesson on managing users, groups, and computers.